All right, let's get started on our chunky textured pillow cover, pattern number one. All three patterns will coordinate with the chunky textured three color striped blanket. One of the colors is teal. It's Bernat Softy Chunky. This is a super bulky uh, number six weight yarn. Obviously you can substitute any yarn you would like. I'm using a 10 millimeter, well used <laughs> crochet hook. You'll need a bigger uh, darning needle with a bigger hole for sewing it together and a smaller darning needle for sewing the buttons on and a tape measure. So the buttons, I got this pack uh, on Amazon, the yarn and uh, the buttons I will put on uh, as a link on my website, which is www.i-crochet.com. So we're gonna need one inch buttons. These uh, are what I'm going to use, but this is a really nice set. It comes with lots of different, you can see I've used a lot of them. I used a lot of these. Handmade with love, the little hearts on it, super cute. All right, so I believe that's all you'll need. And some scissors, any sharp scissors you have. To start, we're going to chain, chain 37, just in case you don't know how to make a slip knot. This is how I make mine. Leave yourself a big tail. Pull that through. I've seen lots of ways. Some seem even faster and easier than that, but this is how I learned. And I'm a creature of habit, so I'm going to continue doing it this way. Let me get my supplies out of the way. So chain 37, that doesn't count as a chain there. I'll meet you back here when you have 37 chains. All right, I have 37 chains. We're going to come in to the second chain from the hook. This doesn't count. That's the first chain. That's the second chain. And we're gonna go into the back bump. So find your back bump right there. And we're going to make herringbone, half double crochet. Pull that first loop through the second. You have two loops left, yarn over, pull through two. You're going to go in the back bump of each chain. If you get confused, turn it back over, find your next chain. There's your bump. Yarn over. They're all going to be herringbone, half double crochet. Pull that first loop through the second loop, yarn over, pull through two. I'll do one more. If you, Again, if you get lost, it's going to want to turn itself over, and as long as you can keep up with those back bumps, they're, it's a horizontal bar, basically. That's great, but if not, just turn it over, find your chain, turn it back over, go into that back bump, it's just a good habit to get into. It makes a nicer foundation. Pull that first loop through the second. You have two loops left on your hook. Yarn over and pull through those two. So continue all the way down with your herringbone half double crochet in the back bump. And I'll meet you back at the end of the row. All right, at the end of row one, you should have 36 herringbone half double crochet stitches and it should measure somewhere around 18 inches. Let's see, I don't know if you can even see that. Mine is right around 18 and a half, somewhere in that vicinity and you might need to stretch it out a little bit. That's, that's fine. So at the end of your row, chain one and turn. This is going to be your repeat row throughout. It really could not be any easier. 
I throw in the herringbone half double crochet stitch whenever I can because I just love it. So we're gonna go in that uh, very, very first stitch, but we're gonna go only into the back bump, the back loop, I'm sorry. There's your front loop, there's your back loop. That's where you're going to go in. So yarn over, go into your back loop. I keep wanting to say back bump. It's a back loop, back loop only, B-L-O. And make your herringbone half double crochet. Bring that first loop through the second, yarn over and come through both loops. You are going to go in the back loop only all the way across. My lighting is not terrific today. There's your back loop. Pull through, herringbone, half double crochet. It makes a really pretty stitch. You could go through the whole stitch if you prefer to do that. This just gives you a little different look. Back loop only, pull through, pull through two. Let's do one more. Yarn over. Back loop only, pull through, pull that first loop through the second loop, yarn over, pull through two. And that, my friends, is your pattern. When you get to the end of the row, at the end of the row, go through the full stitch and still do a herringbone half double crochet and a chain one and turn. And when you turn, go in the back loop only of the first all the way across to the end and through the whole stitch at the end. You could go through the back loop only at the end if you want to. I think it uh, finishes out a little bit better if you go through the whole stitch. That's the way that I do it. You. You do you, you do it how you want to do it. So herringbone, half double crochet, back loop only until you reach approximately 42 inches. You could go a little bit longer than that. We're going to use a 20 inch pillow form. You could use an 18 inch if you want to. Generally speaking, if, you're, if you have an 18 inch square uh, pillow cover, you want a 20 inch pillow form because it fills it out nicely. You might want to do an 18 inch pillow form just to make sure it doesn't show through your stitches depending on how tight or loose you stitch. I am using a 20 inch. So I will meet you back here when you reach somewhere around 42 inches. Okay, I, I'm i not going to go to 42 inches myself. I've already made the pillow cover. I lost the video, unfortunately, of making that whole pillow cover. But this is the pattern all the way up to 42 inches. I'm going to show you the last row. You're going to go into the back bump of the first nine stitches with your herringbone half double crochet. we're going to be making just some small buttonholes, just using one inch buttons, three one inch buttons. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, I got to nine. Chain one. Now don't skip any stitches, just continue on with your pattern for another nine stitches. Back loop only, herringbone half double crochet. One, two, three, four, Make sure it went into the right stitch. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 
six, seven, eight, nine. Chain one, go into the next stitch for the next nine. Herringbone, half double crochets, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Obviously fast forward, slow down, whatever you need to do to make watching the video helpful. Chain one and herringbone half double crochet into the final nine stitches. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. As I said, I like to go into the whole stitch for the final stitch. Now that would be your last row. If you want to, you can come back with a row of single crochet. I don't find that it's necessary. Uh, and at this point, you can cut your yarn and pull it through, fasten off. You're going to be folding, I'll show you in a minute. You'll be folding it over with the button side towards the uh, inside because when you sew it and flip it back over, the buttonholes will be on the outside. So I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a minute. Okay, I've already sewn mine together. These are the edges. All I did was go through both sides. Just put your yarn through, uh, tie a knot, and just continue on making sure that your grab, hello, <laughs> start in the corner, making sure that you're grabbing a stitch or two from each side and just continue to pull your yarn through. When you fold it over, as you can see, I already have my buttons. This is, this is inside out. It is a reversible pattern, so it does not matter which way you fold it. What matters is when you first, before you uh, stitch up your sides. The side that's going to have the buttons should overlap because when you flip it back over, the buttonholes will be on the right side. The buttonholes right now are gonna be on the inside you won't put the buttons on until you flip it over. And I came up in about one row. I overlapped about one row. Probably two rows would have been even better. You just have to remember when you get to where it overlaps, make sure that you are going through all those thicknesses. when you're sewing it. And then continue sewing down to the corner. Do the same on the other side. The important thing to remember is how, however far you overlapped, whether it was one row or two rows, do the same thing on the other side. Start, start up at the corner, tie your yarn on, just do a, just a simple stitch. A whip stitch is like this, you bring your your needle with your yarn through, and then you come around again and bring it through. I will show you on the next pillow uh, 
hopefully, pillow cover. Hopefully I don't lose that video. That hasn't happened before. I didn't have enough yarn to make another one of these. I didn't want to waste. You can weave in your ends. Nobody's going to see the inside of it, so it's not that big a deal. When you flip it around, sorry, I know you can't really see what I'm doing here. I'll have to work on my videography, videographer skills. So when you turn it over, the buttonhole side is going to be overlapping now. And so just find out the button placement and just make sure that you line all three up in the same, on the same row and make sure that um, however you sewed your buttons on, they're all going the same way. That just looks better, I think. All you have to do is bring the yarn through and through again and tie it. And then this one I did not weave through, but I should have left a longer edge. Uh, weave your ends in and out. That way you make sure the button's not going to come out in the wash, come off in the wash. Uh, also, it is tricky to get the yarn onto the smaller needle that you need to be able to go through the button. You just really have to kind of work at it a little bit. But because it's difficult, and I learned this the hard way, make yourself a really long piece of yarn so that you only have to thread it once. That makes sense. All right. So, like I said, I used a 20 inch pillow form and you can see the pictures of it completed on, on my website, on the pattern. I'll have a link to it in my description here. So you, and you can either have it going with horizontal or vertical. Kind of looks like a sweater when you place it vertically. And then the other side. I think that just makes, oh, nice texture. That's gonna look really nice with that blanket. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. And pattern number two will be the same exact pattern as the blanket, except I'm not making stripes. It's only going to be in the natural color. So join me for that one. Thank you for watching. All right. That's the finished pillow. As you can see, it coordinates really well with the blanket. And that is a 20 inch pillow form. When you're making this, it's going to look like no way is that pillow form or that pillow cover going to fit that 20 inch pillow form, but it will because this pattern stretches. And I think it looks really nice. Hope you like it.